And what is the conversation that you're having with patients who um, find out that they have those genes? Are, are we encouraging conversations maybe with, with, their, with their kids or, or how does that communication go? And, you know, what, what is your hope in the way that would apply that, that information to their life? Yeah, so sh- sharing that with them and the results um, when these labs come back, as obviously as you can imagine, they're a little specialized. They take some time to cook and return to us. But just letting them know, hey, we found this. You're positive for this uh, PNPLA3. This is what it means. And this is what I think it's kind of our next steps and goals should be. And this is why I think it's so important for us to really work on these pieces of your diet, your lifestyle, and, you know, uh, use, uh, just be motivational, really, just to kind of help show them how important it is, uh, just because it's the one thing that is a little bit out of our control. Mm-hmm. So I know the team here focuses a lot on at-risk patients. Why is that important? What's your approach to making sure that you're alerting people who are the most at risk? How are they even being I- identified? Yeah. Yeah, these patients often come through their primary care clinics, and th- that's the front line, right? Um, and uh, they're the ones who are going to be seeing these patients and providing them with opportunities to give simple risk stratification and find those who may be at risk early on is very important. This is where tools like the FIB4, which in our system is a simple dot phrase, type in, pulls all the variables, calculates it for you. This number's been met refer to our clinic, makes it very simple to basically find those we should be concerned about and allows us to evaluate them further, really delve deeper, do our non-invasive testing, and really categorize their their at their category from a fibrosis perspective. Are you seeing any trends in the stage of disease progression that patients have by the time they make it to your office? Yeah, so most patients um, end up coming through in sort of like the low to F2 kind of m- mid fibrosis range, um, which is is helpful to basically provide further education uh, on their disease state. And those who are, again, at risk would benefit from the therapeutic options that we can provide them from our clinic. And ultimately, we do also want to find those who may have cirrhosis as well, just because they may unknowingly have this disease silent, right? No obvious other markers or anything besides knowing that they have blood pressure problems, diabetes, sugar problems. They may be obese, but they may require very specialized care when we do find out what they're really dealing with. Very interesting. Tell me a little bit about your hopes for the future. We've talked a little bit about um, personalized medicine too and communication and things like that. What what do you hope to see ch- um, change or improve in this field? Um, what are you looking forward to even? Yeah, I think it's what would be like a dream scenario is to really have the opportunity to tackle all the patients' metabolic diseases in one situation, in one setting, in one clinic. So, you know, have the hepatologist perspective, endocrinology, cardiology, dietitian, and really kind of give a whole body, basically approach, whole system effort, and really just guide them through individualized, personalized care that meets their goals, um, that basically... uh, is appropriate for kind of their stage of their disease and that can provide them very hopeful opportunities for management for treatment and for resolution perfect well this has been a great conversation um thank you so much for joining us on md newsline it's been a pleasure yeah same here i appreciate it